Hey everybody, I'm Jason Yoder. Welcome to the channel. So you decide you want to travel the world and take some amazing images and sell them. <laughs> but here's the problem. You're upgrading from this to this bad boy. And when you get home, you realize this guy doesn't really produce sharp images like this one does. What I'm going to show you in this video is what you need to do before, during, and after your photo shoot to get those sharp images. But first, click that subscribe button, ring that bell, and give this video a thumbs up. Let's do this. I can be with you So why does this take sharper images than this? Well, a few reasons. First of all, there's softer in here that's going to do auto sharpening of your images. And that's a real cool feature for amateur photographers. And then also this very tiny lens also helps to make your images much more sharper as well. Well, you might be thinking, why do I want to buy this if this does it all for me? It's because I can do far more with the images I produce with this camera than with this cell phone. That's why we do it. So let's talk about some of the things that you need to do before you do your photo shoot to make sure you've got clear, sharp images. Number one, we got to keep that front element clean. The Venetians aren't very health conscious here. The amount of dust I'm picking up on the lens, I think it's from all the smoking they do. Now you can use a lens brush, which is what I do when I'm in the field, but you also want to make sure that you keep your lens clean. Make sure you're using microfiber cloths that are not going to scratch your lenses. And make sure you keep those clean. Also, in front of your front element, you're going to want to have some type of a protector. This is just a clear protector. But let me tell you, if anything hits my lens, anything scratches it, this is far cheaper to replace than this. Next up, image stabilization. If you're going to go free-handed, your heartbeat, your breathing is going to shake this camera. And that's when you, when you open up your shutter, it could cause a blur to happen. So look carefully on the side of your lens. If you have image stabilization, make sure it's turned on while you're in handheld mode. The final thing that you can do to make sure you're taking sharp images before you start is to not use this. This is a kit lens. This is the lens that came with my camera when I bought it. This is an upgraded lens. The thing with a kit lens is yeah, they're really good and I have sold um, a lot of pictures using kit lenses. But I get much better results out of more expensive lenses. Truth be told, the lens makes a huge difference. And when we get to the post-production part, you'll see one of the reasons why. All right, so let's talk about what you can do while you're taking your images to help keep them stable. First of all, if you're going to go handheld, stabilize yourself. That way your camera has less of a chance to shake and create blur. The next thing is, is to shoot in aperture mode. In aperture mode, what it does is it controls the aperture of the camera. Now, this camera has a very tiny aperture, and that gives you a larger uh, field that's going to be in focus. By closing down your aperture here, it does the same thing, but don't go too far because what will happen is if you close that pinhole too far, the light starts to separate in its wavelengths. I actually keep my camera at about F9 setting uh, when I'm in aperture mode. All right, next up, if you want to take sharp images, and this is going to bother some people, you need to have a tripod. Seriously, I know this is a pain. I mean, you have, to, you have to carry this thing, you have to put it out, set it up, take it down, what have you. But this is actually the key to getting some incredibly sharp images. Now, this is my three-legged thing tripod, and there's a link for it down in the comments section. This is what allows me to do panoramas. It's a little bit more of an expensive tripod. It is carbon fiber. It is a very firm tripod in the wind. You don't need to buy an expensive one. You just need something that's going to hold your camera steady so it doesn't move. Now, when you're on the tripod, turn your image stabilization off. 
because it can actually now make the image less clear because your tripod is providing the stabilization. Also, you don't actually want to touch the camera if you can help it. So I have a cable release for my camera. We're looking at Heaven's Peak. So I got the camera set up. We're gonna do some bracket images because there's snow out there. There's lots of clouds, there's lots of dramatic light. So here we go. Here is Heaven's Peak. Now newer cameras actually have an app in phone and you can control your camera wirelessly. The whole idea is this, if I click this shutter, even on the tripod, the camera's going to be shaking. The other thing you can do if you don't have the app or if you don't have a cable release is take a look at the manual for your camera. More than likely, you have two different timers, a 10 second and a 2 second. Set it up for the 2 second. Click the shutter and take your hand away. Those two seconds, the camera will stabilize and you'll get much sharper images. My final tip to you is to take three images. When I take a picture, I have my autofocus currently on. When I take a picture, you notice how my finger comes completely off the shutter release. That way when I push it down again, the autofocus re-engages and the autofocus re-engages. The idea is, is now I have three different potential focal points on that one image. Now, what you can do, I'm in burst mode right now. If you hold it down, I took three images, but all of them were focused at the same focal length. So if you think about it, you're in this beautiful place. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity that you're there and you take one picture. Are you really, really willing to risk that image not being in focus? So that's why I take three, so I have three opportunities to get it right. So we're in post-production. You've taken your images, you're back home from your trip. Let's take a look at some tips on how to develop them. First of all, we're looking at an image I took along Route 66. This is Angel's Barber Shop. And we're going to talk about chromatic aberration, and there is some in this image. If you remember earlier in the video, I was talking about kit lenses and some of their shortcomings. All lenses suffer from something called chromatic aberration. That means as you get towards the end of the lens, the light bends more like a prism and you can start seeing the red and blue separating. Let's go ahead and zoom in tight. And you can see, and I am very tight, you can see a lot of blue being separated out here. You can see a lot of red. So let me show you a little trick here in Lightroom. What we're going to do is we're going to focus down here on this one little checkbox. Remove chromatic aberration. This thing is going to do wonders. Let me go ahead and check this. And you can already see in the white uh, lettering or decoration, whatever's there on the screen that we're zoomed in really tight, you can see the chromatic aberration disappear. Let's go to a different part. It's currently on and now it's off. When we zoom all the way out, you really aren't going to notice anything. However, when your images are reviewed for sale in the stock photography market, they are going to be looking at the fringes of your image to see if you've corrected them or not. Now in this case, let me zoom in here on another one. In this case, we're going from dark to light and that is where you're going to find a lot of this happening from dark to light. But with a simple click, you can remove it. My next tip for you is to use sharpening. Now I'm going to caution these next few slider bars, you're going to want to use with caution. So I'm going to go ahead and use the sharpening bar and I'm going to drag it over. It does sharpen the image, but the problem is it can introduce noise. Okay, so we can use noise reduction to smooth out the image to try and get rid of some of that noise. So here's the problem. You're sharpening it so it's less smooth and you're smoothing it to make it less sharp. Do you see how this can be a little counterproductive? You can use these, they're okay, they do work, but be careful you don't use them too much. Now another slider that many people use is clarity. And clarity can help again bring out some of those details and make the image appear sharper. The problem is, is when you try to do clarity in a darker area of your image, such as this door. I'm gonna zoom in really tight onto that door, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the clarity. 
And what happens is more noise can get introduced into the darker areas of your images. So again, be very cautious when you use clarity to try and sharpen your images. So what do I use to make my images sharper? Well, I've got a new favorite slider bar here in Lightroom and it's right here, it's called Texture. When you do texture, it actually helps to bring out more of the texture, makes the image appear sharper, and it doesn't introduce anywhere near as much noise into the darker areas of your image. So that is how, what I do to sharpen my images. I take a look at the texture. Well, that's it. That's how I make sure that I have sharp images. I pay attention to what I'm doing before, during, and after the photo shoot. And that helps to increase the number of images I not only get accepted in the stock photography market, but it increases the number of images that I sell. So how do you make sure that you have sharp images? Leave us a comment and share with us your tips and techniques, and I'll see you all in the next episode.